Welcome back. In this video, we will discuss various hardware devices needed, and how they are interconnected over SAN, to make the tape library, and its tape drives visible, and accessible on a server. Please, like, share, comment, subscribe, and. For SAN connectivity, we need fiber channel, in other words, FC cable connected to the server. To connect the FC cable to the server, we need host bus adapter. HBA needs to be installed or connected to the server. If the server is in the data center, then the DC admin connects the hardware component, and update server admin group. After HBA connected to the server, the server admin will install the relevant HBA drivers, so the device can work as designed. Please note that one HBA comes with two ports for redundancy. We can connect devices to one port, or both the ports. One end of the FC cable is connected to the server, the other end is connected to a port on a switch. Usually, this task is taken care by the DC admin in a data center. If you wish to connect the devices directly as they are nearby, then switch is not needed. Let's discuss about the other end device, tape library. For this video we have picked IBM tape library. Nowadays, most of the IBM tape libraries are FC ready. You can also connect the tape library in different ways, but for this video we focus on fiber channel. FC cable need to be connected between the switch and the tape library. One end is connected to the tape library or drive, and the other end is connected to a port on a switch. Usually, this task is taken care by the data center admin in a data center. On the switch zoning needs to be performed to establish communication between the two devices. What zoning means is, to mask, or bind both the ports to which tape library, and the server connected. By zoning it is defined that traffic between the ports, and, or devices is locked. For zoning, we need the worldwide port numbers from both the server HBA, and the tape library. Please note, for zoning always deliver WWPN, let's now explore various ways to find the WWPN on the server. For Windows 2003, on Windows 2000, we can find the WWPN using the command FC Info, Fiber Channel Information Tool. This tool is not available by default. You need to download the tool from the link given on the slide. This tool discovers the SAN resources, and configuration information, on your fiber channel SAN. Run FC Info command, in the admin command prompt. It will show up HBA connected to the server with port WWN, for Windows 2008. Apart from FC Info, you can also use Storage Explorer. Storage Explorer, shows all the FC switches in the storage fabric, with details about what is connected to each port, of each switch, including information about HBAs and LUNs, as shown in the image. There are also some third-party tools available, which we will discuss in due course. Starting Windows 2012, Storage Explorer is no longer available, so is FC Info. Run Get Initiate a Port command in the admin PowerShell window. It will show all HBAs connected to the server along with WWPN. Let's check practically how it works. Log on to the server. Launch PowerShell in administrator mode. Run command, get initiator port. You see the port address, that is WWPN, and the connection type as fiber channel. Please note, do not give the node address for zoning. The other iSCSI connections shown below, are used for connecting disk storage over internet, using SCSI protocol for block level communication. This topic is discussed in a separate video. There are some third-party utilities from various vendors, who provide graphical user interface, through which we can check for needed information. Few of them are, HBA Anywhere, SAN Surfer, and OC Manager. Let's check how one of these utilities looks like. 
Log on to the server. Under the installed apps, look for OC Manager, and launch it. One command manager is from Broadcom. Once launched it will initialize Discovery Engine, and check for FC configuration. As shown this server has two HBAs. Each HBA has two ports. Once you click on the port, you will see more details, and from here we can retrieve the port address for zoning. You can go through the various tabs to look for more information about this adapter. We can provide the WWPN of any port for zoning. Now let's check how to capture the WWPN on the tape library. Log on to the server from where the tape library IP is accessible. Open a browser and access the library using IP. Type in the user credentials who has access to the library. After successful login you will see system summary page. Expand drives. Click on drive summary. The summary page lists the drives along with the frame and row locations. You can also check the other information related to tape drives. Click on the Worldwide Names link. Here you will see all the port name for all tape drives. You can find respective tape drive port name using the location. Once you have WWPN of both the devices the zoning is done by respective team. Once zoning is completed, a direct connection between the server and tape library is established. All the tape drives that are zoned, along with medium changer will be visible on the server, in the HBA, and the device manager. Let's check on the HBA, how it looks like. Log on to the server. Launch OC Manager. Once the discovery complete you see the HBA is connected to the server. Expand the port to which zoning has been performed. You will see all the connections made to the tape library. Expand one of the connections. You see LON0, which is a medium changer. You also see three tape drives connected. Notice the icons, they resemble tape's symbol. Please note, medium changer is most often linked to either the first drive or, the last tape drive in the library, or the partition. Log on to the server. Launch device manager. In the device manager you see the medium changer, but no tape devices are visible. Right click on the server name and, select scan for hardware changes. This operation invokes, plug and play feature, to detect any new devices attached to the server. Once scan complete, you see all the tape drives visible and accessible to Windows. Right click on the tape drive and, select the properties. Under driver tab we see, native Microsoft tape drivers are installed, which are inbuilt in the Windows 2012 operating system. Tape symbolic name shows the access path of the drive. We will discuss more about this in due course. You can click on other tabs for more info. Let's see how to check, 
update, install, tape drivers. Right click on the tape drive and, select update driver software. Select, browse my computer for driver software. Select, let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer. Here you will see a list of compatible drivers suitable for your hardware. If you see more than one version of driver, please verify if we have any unnecessary driver version listed. If yes, then uninstall all, and install only the needed ones. Having more than one version creates conflict, and the tape drives might not work properly due to the conflict. In our case we see only one compatible driver here, which is inbuilt in the operating system. Ideally, this should be enough to access and use the tape drives. Let's now install vendor specific tape drivers. Please visit the vendor's website, or contact the vendor's support staff to find the compatible tape drivers for your tape model and operating system. In the driver software for IBM tape drives you see the following files and folders. Install exclusive driver is needed if your application needs exclusive access of tape drives, example IBM Tivoli Storage Manager. In exclusive access, tape reservation is locked until the operation like backup, or recovery is completed. In an event the operation goes pending, then the reservation is not released. In a non-exclusive mode the reservation is locked until the phase is active. Let's install non-exclusive drivers. Right click and select run as administrator. Pay attention the drivers are being installed for, change a bus enumerator, tape bus enumerator, medium changer and, tape drives. Tape drivers are successfully installed. Now you see the tape drive's name has got changed than before. Tape symbolic name remains same. The driver provider is changed from Microsoft to IBM. Also, the driver version is changed to the one we have chosen. If we check the available driver version we see two of them, one from Microsoft, and the other one from IBM. If you wish to update the tape driver for one particular tape drive, one of the ways to update the drivers is to select option, search automatically for updated driver software. It will search the system for updated driver version and apply automatically. The other way is to, browse the computer for driver software. Click browse. Select the parent folder under which the tape driver is located, and click OK. Once you click next, it will search the directory for relevant driver and update it. Based on experience we always recommend leaving the medium changer, in other words, robotics, as unknown medium changer. Do not install drivers for it. Even if installed make it unknown medium changer. By default, it will have Microsoft drivers. Let's now check where the changer bus enumerator and tape bus enumerator are. Expand System Devices. Here you will find both Changer Bus Enumerator and Tape Bus Enumerator. Persistent Naming. 
The tape device order scene is Windows is ideally as shown by the tape library. What if the device order change when server reboot? Persistent naming support is used, to ensure that attached devices are always configured with the same logical name, based on the SCSI ID, LUN ID, and host bus adapter, even when the system is rebooted. This slide, and the following slide will show the registry keys, and the locations where they need to be added. Reasons for the keys is also mentioned below for your review. Let's add the registry keys practically. Open registry editor. Expand H key local machine. System. Current control set. Services. And IBM TP2K12. Right click, New, and select D Word 32 bit. Copy paste the key name. Enter value data in decimal. Please ensure there is no space at the end, or beginning of the key name. If there is then recreate the entry. If there is a space left behind then the key will never work, despite its existence. Repeat the steps for other keys. Registry keys to take effect you need to reboot the server. Let's reboot the server and check the status. Server is rebooted. Right click on any one tape drive, and select properties. Select tape symbolic name DAB. We see the persistent naming is applied as discussed. Uninstall tape drivers. If you are using vendor specific drivers then, we strongly recommend not to remove the drivers by right click on tape drive and, selecting option uninstall. Browse to the location where the vendor tape drives are located. You will find uninstall executable. Right click and select run as administrator. Uninstall successfully completed. If it asks you to reboot the server then ensure you reboot the server before reinstalling tape drivers. Post uninstall of tape drivers you would see that, the tape drives are not visible. To make them visible, run scan for hardware changes. Once visible, you would see them with the native Microsoft drivers. But ensure to reboot the server, or else tape drives might not work properly. A blind library is a library without a barcode reader, and is the opposite of a sighted library which has a barcode reader. A blind library must have all its drives, and media of the same type. The Discover Media operation in Convault mounts the media into a drive and if a valid OML is not found, it writes the OML on the media. Once unmounted, the system also keeps track of the media location. Manually label all the exported media for future identification.